time we were in Anchor Point doing a community meeting, Abe and Steve informed us very strongly that the Anchor River moves a lot. This picture is from 1951, and uh, this is now. So it has moved a great deal. Um, here you can see the floodplain of this uh, river, and it can move anywhere in that floodplain, and it tends to. So um, presently, these are the campgrounds that we've got going on. This is a um, region with a proposed boardwalk. We'll talk about that later. We got um, a DEC uh, grant to work on a revegetation program along the, the stream bank. Our uh, main focus and the reason this started was because of this gavian wall. That gavian down by the picnic hall has created a back eddy that is eating away at the, at the banks there. And so to try and figure out what to do about the stream banks around here, since that has had such a huge impact. This was 2004, 2005, 2006. Um, that eddy and this that Gavin, Gavin was put in in about 2002. It was put in a lot longer. Uh, 77, that, 78. 78. Oh, it was maybe redone in 2002 then. Yeah, they fixed the end of it a little bit in 02. Yeah, I was involved in it in the original thing. I, I was looking at the uh, bumper of a pickup about eye level at the time, but yeah, <laughs> I thought my dad took the original uh, Gavin. In 78. Yeah. Awesome. See, that's why I love these community meetings, because all these things that we're getting from records and photographs are not always the right thing. So that was originally what we were tasked to look at, is how to save that zone. Um, this is just uh, what we were looking at mostly, the concept that when you have vegetation on the stream bank and your high water mark hits that, um, you have a fairly stable stream bank. But as soon as you start getting water behind there or getting it eaten away, you'll lose your vegetation on that high water mark and that just makes everything eat away all the faster. Um, so like right here you can see there's a trail along the top there and um, so water can get around behind there and eat, eat your stream bank down and then you can end up widening and widening your stream instead of keeping those um, stream banks up. Um, I want to go back to this. One of the things that we focused on is this is strictly to benefit juvenile salmon. You need to have a really well engineered project or you're going to regret it. So um, with the funding we had and the time we had, we're not going to solve the picnic hole problem this, this year. So what we decided to do was two little demonstration trials. Um, this is going to be in the Silver King campground and it's um, two really simple spots. Uh, June 7th, we're going to have a stream bank restoration workshop. And it's free. And the more people that come, the better. We're going to fill a couple of holes along the Silver King campground with uh, root wads brush layering like that. So we've got willows that we clipped from Soldotna Creek Park on June 7th. And these are the, this is one of the holes. Um, you'll recognize here's a camp spot right there. And this is strictly foot traffic. Uh, you know, it's um, people walking down, it's eaten a little hole, and the water and the ice has come in and, and scoured it out. So we're going to try and stabilize that bank so it's even with the rest of the bank. Where it's cut in, we'll fill that in with brush layers um, and hold that bank back in place. So right here you can see how the stream comes down here. I'm just going to fill in that zone with some uh, willow and brush layering. Uh, if you have any land on the Anchor River and you have scallops and places that are getting eaten away like this, this hopefully will be work as a very good demonstration for you. This is the second spot. This one's much smaller. And again, it's just at the head of a, um, a trail that everybody's walking down a lot. So to save that scallop from eating into the bank more, we're going to put another, either one, um, <coughs> one big bush there, <laughs> or the root bond, or um, the brush layering project again. So it's just going to be two little demonstration projects to see if we can keep the bank safe and stable there. Um, one of the things about the um, gabion walls versus brush layering, you know, some people say, oh, just rip wrap it all. Uh, 
Nowadays, they're really getting away from rib rat just for the salmon habitat issue. If you have one little juvenile salmon and he has a big clean wall, he will guard that whole zone as his territory. If he has a bunch of brush, he'll, he'll guard the zone that he can feel safe in. So then you can stock up a bunch of more salmon living in there. So that's what we're trying to do is make sure that stream bank keeps a lot of vegetation on it so that we can have lots of juvenile salmon harboring in there. But um, we're not going to do the whole picnic pool area yet. That's going to be a continuing discussion as to how to make that back eddy stop happening right there. So that's Homer Soil and Water. I would like to pass it on now to Cook Inlet Keeper, Sue Mogger.